In this video, we're going to talk about the WPS or Welding Procedure Specification. If you're wondering what this documentation is for, as a beginner, then this video is for you. Tune in up to the end of the video as I'm going to give out a free Udemy course regarding the welding inspector and welding safety practices, which is part of the fundamentals of the CWI exam. If you want to become a certified welding inspector, then that course is for you. With that, let's dive right in. A WPS or a welding procedure specification provides direction to the welder or welding operator for making production welds in accordance with code or standard requirements. The WPS provides in detail the required welding variables for the specific application to assure repeatability by properly trained welders. The welding inspector does not just inspect a weld and say, oh, that's a good weld. They need to have governing documents for the welders to follow. Common welding standards such as AWS D1.1, Structural Code for Steel, ASME 9, Welding and Brazing Specification, API 1104, Welding of Related Facilities and Pipelines, are just some of the codes and standards that provides guidance on how a WPS shall be created and qualified. This is a sample WPS. Looks a bit overwhelming, isn't it? Don't worry much about the format as different standards have different formats but the content is essentially the same. Let's look into the details. The first part is the welding process. Note that whatever process indicated here, it shall match the work intended. For example, if the metal to be welded is a thin sheet metal and the WPS indicated a submerged arc welding, which is best for very thick metals as it is machine operated, then you should know that the WPS you are looking into is not for that specific work. The base metal is the part that is to be welded. In all of the WPS, there is a P number indicated as shown here. This just means that the material to be welded belongs to that metal group. This is for economic purposes as WPS may not need to be created for other material that belongs to the same P number. Other parameters indicated here are the metal thickness and the type and grade of metal material referred by ASTM standards. Filler metal is the material that liquefies and produced by the heat of the welding process that forms the weld metal. These are designated by F number for filler metal and A number for the weld metal. I'll create a video discussing the electrodes of various welding processes and how to read them, so stay tuned for that as well. The AWS Filler Metal Guide has provided a description and uses of those filler metals. To address the confusion between these AWS numbers, I have tabulated their differences here. So basically, P number is for the base metal, F number is for the filler metal, and A number is for the welded metal. The WPS also indicates the joint design. This is just the sketch of the groove design, angle, root opening, root face, and other dimensional parameters. Some WPS just refers this one to a reference drawing. So if the work is contracted out with a job specification, the owner or design engineer might have this as a reference drawing. Don't worry if the WPS does not have this indicated as long as this is referred to a document. Weld positions are indicated in ASME 9, QW405. If the position indicated in the WPS is for all position and it's qualified as indicated here in the sample, then the production weld can also be welded in all positions. Preheat temperature is the temperature of the previously deposited weld metal immediately prior welding. As you can see in this sample WPS, the required preheat is only 10 degrees Celsius. The implication of that is just the metal will not need to be preheated and it indicates that prior welding moisture shall be removed. This is an essential preparation especially for some electrodes where moisture can be detrimental in the weld quality as this can cause porosity and other similar defects. Preheating is also essential for other base metals, especially for thicker or harder metals to improve weldability. Interpass temperature is the temperature in the previously deposited metal immediately before the next pass is started. This is the temperature limit in which the next pass allowed to be welded. PWHT or post-weld heat treatment is the subsequent heat treatment after welding to remove residual stresses. 
It includes the holding time or soaking time and the temperature range. This is essential for some metals because if the residual stress is not removed, it will cause weld defects in the metal. For some welding processes, shielding gases are also indicated. These are just inert gases such as argon, helium, CO2. These are commonly used for GTAO and GMAO processes, where the shielding gas is an external source for the welding process. The WPS also indicates the electrical characteristics for the welding machine and the welder technique. Some welding processes and its electrode prefers DC or AC. DC can be further classified into DCEN, DC electrode negative or straight polarity, and DCEP, DC electrode positive or reverse polarity. SMAO or stick welding normally follows DCEP and GTAO or gas tungsten arc welding or tungsten inert gas welding normally follows DCEN. But some electrodes can be used for AC and DC as well. Indicated here as well is the welding technique, such as string and weave and the necessary surface preparation prior to the start of the weld. The last table below is the electrode designation, current and voltage range, travel speed, polarity, and heat input of the individual weld passes or layers. AWS Filler Metal Guide prescribes the limits especially for the current, voltage ranges, travel speed, and heat input. These parameters along with the electrode type determines the penetration of the weld, length and width of the arc, and the amount of weld deposition in the base metal. The selection of which depends upon the base metal's mechanical and chemical properties, thickness, and preheat temperature preparation, among others. There you have it! That is just a beginner's guide on what to look for in a WPS and the welding variables involved. If you want to know more about welding inspection and pass the CWI exam, I have a free welding introductory course for the fundamentals part of the exam, just for the people who watch this video. It's in the description below. Just click it and it will take you to the course. Note that it's only valid for 20 days up until the posting of this video. So enroll now, it's free and it's yours for a lifetime. So if you haven't already, please comment down below if you have any questions. And while you're at it, be sure to like this video so I know that people like this type of content. It motivates me to do more of these. So subscribe to the channel as well for more. See you on the next one.